Hey everybody, I'm Greg Sussman, and today we're taking a look, obviously, at the tournament, in particular, Thursday afternoon for the early slate, and FanDuel has you ready, and to break the slate down with us, I'm joined by Brett Oswalt from FanDuel to give us all the advice we can all handle. What's going on, Brett? What's up, Greg? What's up, everyone? March is here. March is definitely here, and we'll start with the top plays on the board, and that brings us to Kansas with Diedrich Lawson. And if Kansas is going to make a move, Lawson has to be the guy that gets them there. Why is he one of your higher-priced players that you're putting in your lineup? Well, he's your classic do-it-all kind of college basketball player, and he's one of only two guys averaging 19 boards, or excuse me, 19 points, 10 boards, a steal, and a block per game. And now he's without two of his best running mates in Azubuki and um, with Gerald Vick so for, for multiple reasons. So he is going to shoulder even more of the load than he has all year, which his usage rate is up near 29% according to sports reference. And so we need to target that heavily uh, for a guy averaging nearly 37 FanDuel points a game this year. Lawson does a bit of everything, as you heard Brett say. That's why he helps you over in FanDuel, because he gives you the block, he gives you the steal, he gives you an assist, along with all the points and rebounds. Lawson is a yeah. good player to build your lineup around. Up next, we'll go to Michigan State, and one of the best players that I got a chance to see in the country, and that's Cassius Winston, who many people predict will lead the Spartans to the Final Four. Cassius Winston at $8,900, obviously a good price. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, he's a Naismith candidate for a reason. He's one of the best point guards and one of the best passers in all the nation. He's third in assists per game and second in assist rate in the entire NCAA. Um, and he's heading a Spartans team that has a very high total uh, out in Vegas, around 76 points at this time. They're giant favorites, playing an overmatched Bradley squad. Uh, you expect him to take advantage of, of Tom Izzo's success in March and in past years. So... You got to go big. If you're going big at guard, uh, you can't go wrong with Cassius Winston. Winston, one of the best guards in the country, as you said, nominated for the Naismith Award this year, and for good reason. Every time he plays, he, I don't know, he impresses me. And I think he'll do a lot of impressing, at least early on Thursday, against Bradley. Up next, we'll get to Tremont Waters for LSU. And, Brad, everyone's off of LSU this week, especially on Thursday. Given that Will Wade's not coaching, given that they're playing a Yale team that people love, why are you in on LSU? It's the first two LSU players will get to you. And why are you in on Tremont Waters? Well, we're in on LSU because they have the highest total on the slate as they get ready to take on uh, a very high-paced, high-scoring Yale squad all their own. Uh, the Tigers' total is seven points higher than the next closest team, last I checked, um, on the slate. Uh, Yale's defense is 149th in KenPalm.com's adjusted def uh, defensive efficiency rating. And uh, beyond just the boost he's getting from that, uh, he's averaging over 15 points for a second straight year. He's also thrown in those uh, three steals a game. So that's just six Vandal points you're getting from steals alone, uh, especially against a Yale team that allows opposing teams uh, have seven steals a game. So it's a recipe for success uh, with Waters 8200. Yeah, so here's what people have to remember. Even though LSU may lose this game and Yale could ultimately beat them, it be high scoring. It's the highest total on the board is what LSU is giving you. So putting not just one player, and we'll get to the second one in a moment, two players in your lineup, well, it could make all the sense in the world and be a big difference maker for you. Up next, we'll get to Sam Hauser and Marquette. Another popular upset pick, Brett Marquette, uh, in the first round, falling to Murray State, of course, and John Morant. I don't see John Morant on the list, but Hauser makes the cut. How come? Well, everybody is going to be on uh, John Morant and Marcus Howard on the other side on on uh, Sam Hauser's same team. Uh, you're going to pay up for Marcus Howard above uh, 8,000. You're getting Hauser in this nice mid-range area. Uh, you're getting exposure to that juicy 149.5 total between these two teams in this exciting 12-5 matchup. Um, there still might be some popularity involved, but uh, I think it's a very good contrarian play especially for a guy who has a high of 42.1 FanDuel points this season. He can really fill it up from outside. So um, I would look for him to have a good game against this Murray State Racers team, which plays at a high Racers pace. It's going to be fast and a lot of scoring. So Hauser, one of those guys that maybe people aren't thinking about, a little bit contrarian at 7,400. It's a good price on a team or in a game with a high total. A lot to like there with Sam Hauser and Marquette. 
We mentioned Cassius Winston earlier, but Xavier Tillman, another one of those Spartans that you may want to consider in daily fantasy on Thursday early. $7,300. How come you're going back to Michigan State here? Well, they have a very advantageous matchup, like I said, against Bradley and uh, believe it or not, Bradley's leading rebounder uh, stands six foot seven, Elijah Childs. Uh, Tillman is six eight, very lengthy, six eight, very athletic uh, player. He hasn't been playing big minutes all year, uh, but if you look at his per forty minute numbers, he's at sixteen point three points and twelve point four boards a game, and he's going to get all the run he can get, especially with this Michigan State team uh, shorthanded without. Kyle Aarons and, and Joshua Langford, who was hurt earlier in the year. Uh, he's also tied for the most putbacks on the team and uh, converting 70% of those opportunities. Uh, so if he can take advantage of those uh, of the poor rebounding numbers on Bradley's side, I could see him having a very big game and potentially at low ownership given his lack of minutes at points this year. Averaging under 24 minutes per game. So maybe, again, a contrarian play here from Brett that'll help you out and go in a different direction than the majority of the fantasy players on Thursday. One more top play to get to, and that's Nas Reed for LSU. We spoke about them before, the high total against Yale. Why, in particular, are you interested in Nas Reed? First and foremost, he's super talented, was a very highly touted freshman when he got signed by LSU, one of many that we've seen over the years, including Ben Simmons. Um, he's actually one of only four uh, freshmen in LSU history, or going back to 1993, uh, according to Sports Reference Database, that has averaged 13 points and seven boards a game. Uh, he has seven double-doubles this year, um, and he's coming off uh, just a 26.14 rebound game against Florida in a loss in the conference tournament. Uh, so he's playing at his best. He's peaking. Uh, he has that experience now, even in his freshman season, to where he can take advantage of, of LSU's high total and get you uh, a big amount of fantasy points, potentially at under 7,000. Reed, obviously incredibly talented, and even without Will Wade as the head coach this week, I think there's a lot to like with all of the LSU Tigers, and that's why, as Brett said, it makes sense to get at least two in your lineup. We gave you the top plays, but... Who are you going to pair them up with? Where is the value to be found? We'll let you know when we come back. More from the FanDuel Hurry Up right after this. Back with you on the FanDuel Hurry Up alongside Brett Oswald from FanDuel. I am Greg Sussman. We gave you some of the top plays to look for on Thursday's FanDuel DFS slate. But we need to get the value plays to pair those top guys up with. So let's start with Kansas, who for once isn't a one or a two seed. They're a four seed. And what Jayhawk makes the most sense to get into our lineups this week? Yeah, that's Devin Dotson, a super talented freshman guard. Uh, he's not the cheapest value player you're going to find at just under 6000 but he's been a key player for this Jayhawk team all season. And he's picked up the slack in the absence of uh, Legero Vic, who, as I said, left the team for personal reasons. Uh, and since he did so on February 5th, Dotson's numbers are up in terms of shot attempts from 7.7 .7 a game to 9.8 a game. Uh, in that time, he's averaging 24 FanDuel points, but that's up to 28 in three Big 12 conference games uh, or in the conference tournament at that. Uh, so he's just a talented freshman producing now, uh, getting more minutes, uh, peaking at the right time, much like a lot of freshmen this time of year. Um, so he's a very good value play to add alongside Lawson. We mentioned Dedrick Lawson earlier, and pairing him up with Devin Dotson makes a lot of sense for the Kansas Jayhawks, in particularly if you want to pair off these guys and go after Northeastern. It just makes too much sense not to get both Jayhawks in there. Another player you want to get in there is Blake Reynolds of Yale. We said before that LSU-Yale game is going to be high scoring, and Reynolds at $5,400 makes a lot of sense, Brett. Yeah, this is a senior captain of this Yale squad. Um, he hasn't been averaging big minutes all year, but you have to imagine he's going to get more run in the tournament and, and crunch time uh, as a senior. He is third on the team in points per game already, uh, and that's up to 17.2 over 40 minutes. Now he's probably going to play around 30 minutes, but, but you don't need giant production from him to reach value. Uh, if you're looking for that optimal four times value, all you need is, is 21.6 FanDuel points at this price. He's a nice stretch four, shooting over 44% from three, uh, and he could cause matchup problems for a guy like Nas Reed that we said, you know, he's a bigger guy and he's going to be sucked inside. As the senior leader for this Yale team, well, 
He's going to put up points. You know he does not want this to be his last game of his career. It's a real big reason to like Blake Reynolds and as many superstars that you could fill into your lineup here. It's going to be high scoring. We know that. So make sure you get a bunch of Tigers and a bunch of Yale players in there. Up next, Christian Cunningham for the Louisville Cardinals. Or he's up next. And, well, Cunningham against Minnesota. I like the matchup. Maybe it's just because I'm not high on Minnesota. What do you think of Cunningham and Louisville? Yeah, this is more of a, a contrarian spot. Uh, like you said, it's it's not an obvious spot to go to according to the Vegas totals and everything like that. But it will be a close game uh, according to those uh, Vegas spreads. Uh, five and a half point favorites the Cardinals are. Uh, and Cunningham is one of very few players in this range that can get you around 30 FanDuel points because of his scoring. And just his minutes load overall, he's a little old for your average college player. He's 23 years old. He's played in over 140 uh, collegiate basketball games. Uh, he transferred from Sanford this year. So he has that experience of playing and, and knowing all the things you need to know uh, come March. Kind of checks all the boxes, given the experience, given the amount of talent that he has, and given uh, his role for this Louisville team playing over 31 minutes a game. Obviously, someone you want to get in your lineup. Up next, we go to Murray State, and it's not John Moran. He certainly not, would not qualify as a value play. But it's Darnell Coward. How come Coward fits the bill and not some of these other Murray State players? Yeah, what we want to do here is actually play off that Ja Morant play that everybody else is going to be looking to do since he's finally on a slate this year. But he's expensive, and why not take advantage of his playmaking skills, uh, get a guy that can grab a couple alley-oops and easy dunks down low as well as the rebounds. Um, he does have season highs of 23 points and 13 rebounds in his first year with the Racers. Uh, he's a junior transfer He's averaging over 19 minutes, uh, but over 40 minutes, he's averaging 21.6 points. Uh, he has five double-doubles since the beginning of February, so he also has picked up his play of late in conference play. Um, and his usage is fairly high for a guy that doesn't play a ton of minutes around 25%. So this is what I think is an obvious value spot to get in this high-scoring game against Marquette. The good spot for him, playing off John Morant, but just cheaper. Obviously someone you want to pay attention to, and obviously someone consider getting into your lineup, especially at the price, just $5,000. We go back to Michigan State here, our third Michigan State player, and it's Aaron Henry. You're loading up on Spartans here, Brett. Yeah, why not another one, you know? <laughs> um, they have one of the higher totals on the board, and they're a big favorite. Uh, now, they're shorthanded, and that's the main point that we're looking here for for Aaron Henry, who is just 4,900. So he needs just 19.6 FanDuel points for you to get that four times optimal value you're looking for. He's averaging a hair over 20 minutes a game for the year, but he played over 30 minutes a game in the Big Ten tournament. Uh, now Kyle Ahrens is out, so he's going to be the biggest beneficiary, and he gets you those peripheral stats that we like to see from our value guys. Uh, 7.1 boards per 40 minutes, along with 2.7 assists, and 2.2 blocks plus steals uh, so he can get you get you what you need done in the big amount of minutes that he's seen recently for the Spartans minutes that's what the name of the game is if you can just find a guy that's playing all these minutes on a beat up team uh, a coach that doesn't really want to play his younger players that aren't ready for prime time Aaron Henry fits the bill he's cheap under five thousand dollars certainly someone you have to consider on Thursday one more guy to get to, and that's Trevlin Queen for New Mexico State. $4,700. How come you're looking in this direction? A player that averages less than 15 minutes a game. Yeah, like you said, Queen is not a big contributor. He hasn't seen a ton of minutes throughout the year. He's averaging just 7.5 points and 14.7 FanDuel points. Now, fortunately, all we need is 18.8 from him at 4700 for him to reach value. He's coming off a very hot 27-point game in the conference title game. And he has six games of 13-plus points since February 7th. So he's hot. He's an efficient scorer. He has multiple games with double-digit points in less than 25 minutes. You don't usually see a guy do that. So he has a special kind of talent. And even against Auburn, you know, this could end up being a slightly higher-scoring game than the experts think uh, because Auburn gives them a nice uh, pace boost by about two possessions. So Queen would be a smart guy to fit in your lineup with the very uh, high-priced guys like Lawson and Winston. The Killer Queen, a perfect value play, and you could fit in more high-priced guys like a Winston, maybe a Ja Morant, maybe a Sam Hauser as well. A lot of different variations you could do. One that you're going to need to do, Queen 
at just $4,700. That's going to do it for us here at the FanDuel Hurry Up. I want to thank Brett Oswalt for joining me. Good luck in DFS on Thursday. Good luck in your brackets. And, well, we'll see you back for more March Madness coverage right here tomorrow.